And I was uh, watching on the internet today something about um, TV shows that are being released on Netflix or what have you that they recommended people watching. And one of the shows they talked about was Space 1999. Now, I really liked that show. Let me tell you a little bit about that for those of you who don't know. Uh, growing up in the 70s and the early 70s, Star Trek had now become very popular in syndication, which was hysterical because with the show we're in, it had terrible ratings. But then when it went to syndication, everyone started watching it. And the problem was is that channels like Channel 11, WPAX in New York, what have you, were, were showing Star Trek every day. And I love Star Trek. Even now, I still like it. I'm a big fan of it. But still, there was only about 79 episodes made, if I'm not mistaken. So, if you were watching Star Trek five times a week, maybe sometimes six, that's six times two, 52, roughly, you know, six times 52 weeks. You know, that's like, you know, 130 times, whatever. You know what I mean? So, um, so essentially, uh, you could be seeing a Star Trek episode three or four times during the year, the same episode. So, in the span of a year, you may have seen By Any Other Name or The Omega Glory or what used to happen to me when I come back home from school. Like every three months, I was catching the change on the episode with Nomad. Sterilized. Everyone knows that episode. Sterilized. Anyway, so it got to be a point where after two or three years, and I was a kid, six, seven years old, whatever, you could become a Star Trek ep expert in a really short period of time because after three years, you might have seen the show like, you know, uh, 12 times each episode after a three-year run. So the problem was is that when you were starting to memorize the lines of the show and starting to know what's going to happen next, it does get a little bit boring. Uh, but Star Trek still is a great show and like I don't watch it you know for maybe years at a time and then I'll get in the streak where I'll watch season one you know season two or episodes back to back to back to back you know I um, have a lot of episodes on uh, VHS uh, when it was on channel 11 so I taped them the year before I went to law school in 87 that summer so I have all these commercials from that year which really started like, buy a car for $2,000 <laughs> so it's really a kind of a uh, uh, kind of a, like a little timepiece uh, uh, time period uh, museum of the time period for that time. Anyway, so in 1975 um, Space 99 got released in the United States. It was a British show and it starred uh, Martin Landau and his wife Barbara Bain and basically uh, the a lot of these episodes I learned were actually made in 73, 74 and then they came over here already made. So do we already get in the finished product when they finally reach the United States? And this this show was pretty good because we needed for those of you who were science fiction fans back then, there really was kind of a drought of science fiction. Science fiction still had the stigma attached with like you're a nerd, it's stupid, whatever. And this is all before Star Wars in seventy seven. So us science fiction fans needed something new. There was nothing else on back in the early seventies. All there was was Star Trek. I can't think of anything else. I mean, maybe like you know, there was like Voyage of the Bottom of the Sea or something like that, but that wasn't shit that wasn't playing. So Star Trek is the only thing we really got. And the show basically takes place on the moon, moon base alpha, because in nineteen ninety nine, uh nuclear waste removal has become the Earth's biggest problem. So Commander Koenig, played by Martin Landau, uh, becomes the new commander of Moonbase Alpha, and on the base, people are dying from what appears to be radiation sickness. And it turns out that because of the waste that's been built up there over the years, people are getting dying from magnetic radiation. Eventually, what happens is a big explosion on the moon, and the moon gets blasted out of the Earth's orbit, and that's the base is still intact. Uh, but, you know, they're cut off from Earth, and there begins their journey throughout space, trying to find a new home and a new place to live. So, when this show came out, um, it was unfairly compared to Star Trek. You cannot compare Star Trek, any show to Star Trek. That was the progenitor, as you know me, the King B. <laughs> but that's the show that really put science fiction, a TV show that everyone all like, you know, is part of our icon, part of our culture here in America. But Space Night Time was being unfairly compared to that back then because we needed something new. And 
I think the show was pretty good. I actually liked it. The special effects were great. As I got older, though, I saw what some of the problems with the show was. If you try watching this show, there's no, like, what started to be background music or Captain Kirk would say something funny. There was always, always humor in Star Trek, a little, you know, a little tongue in cheek humor sometimes, even with the action. And Space Man is very, like, dry and wooded and check, Commander, Commander, Commander. Eagle one ready, check. I mean, the spaceships, the eagles were really cool. Um, they were Alpha's, like, workhorse. They could, like, tr you know, they didn't have a transporter beam, so when they went into another planet, they would use the eagle to transfer to another planet. The eagles also, some of them had lasers on them, so that would be uh, Alpha's primary line of defense. This is talking about the first season. We'll talk about the second season and what happened. Uh, at a later date. But anyway, the show star besides Martin Landau and Barbara Bain, who were the power couple, they remember them from Mission Impossible, they were on that series together, was Barry Morse, who was basically a uh, very good actor known from the uh, the Fugitive TV series that he did. And um, and then a lot of British actors and that we don't really know about. <laughs> uh, the only one that really stood out was Nick Tate. He was this Australian guy. Uh, great guy. He was like our favorite. Uh, besides Commander Coney, he was our favorite because he was like Commander Coney's right hand guy. Like, if there's any problems or aliens, you know, would attack, you know, Alan was always in the thick of it. And he was like, he was intensely loyal to uh, everyone. He'd get hot headed sometimes. He was only without any emotion, you know? Uh, and uh, he knew martial arts a little bit, so he was out in the thick of it fighting, and he was very good. Um, I really thought he was a great character. They really marketed the show uh very well before it even came to like america i was seeing pre uh a preludes for it, like to be commercials for it, like coming in may or coming this fall page 1999 they had a lot of toys a lot of merchandise uh space 99 lasers uh you know comic books magazines uh they actually uh do you remember growing up the uh, viewfinder where you put the little disc, the circular disc in, and you click, and you could see a frame. They actually made viewfinder episodes of uh, Breakaway, I think, in War Games. Well, I think it was. I don't have that. But it was really interesting. And the show was really very well promoted. And it did really, it did, it did well to get into another season. And I really liked it. And it was really cool because at the time it came out, I was living in Pennsylvania. So... The week's episode, the Pennsylvania's episode would show a week before New York's episode. And we had this cool antenna on the top of my house. So if I, you had this dial and the, the antenna would move and it would face New York. So, like week one, I would watch Breakaway. And then week two, I would watch the New York Breakaway version. <laughs> and on Pennsylvania, episode number two. So it was really cool. So every week... I'll be watching two episodes. New York will be one week behind. So with each week, I'll be I'll be watching on New York the episode I saw the week before in Pennsylvania. And in Pennsylvania, the new episode for that week. Um, it, like I said, it's really what science fiction kind of needed at the time. Because before Star Wars, and Star Wars is very, to me, very important. I'm not, I, I liked it when I was a kid. But Star Wars put made science fiction vogue. Because everyone remembers like science fiction, like Godzilla, and like there really weren't any big drive-through science fiction movies. I mean, it was all like you know, or like from the fifties, like you know, Earth versus the flying saucers, and you know, the Navy versus the sea monsters, and whatever. Um, and they were they really weren't taken very seriously. But after that period, to me, I feel Space Nineteen Nine kind of you know, and I have no empirical facts for this, this is my own opinion, is that Space 1999 kind of brought out like a new resurgence in, in the interest in science fiction so that, because this was uh, in 75, 76 and, and then Space 99 had a second season in 76, 77 which we'll talk about, like I said, next time but it was during that time that show was getting a lot of recognition. It was in a TV guide. It was in, so that made it right for something I think to appear on the big screen eventually. When Star Wars did, science fiction could not be kept down. And if you think about it, think what came out after Star Wars in '77 for the tail end of the '70s. So we had a lot of science fiction shows. We had Logan's Run with Gregory Harrison. We had The Man from Atlantis. Uh, there was I think a Westworld. Um, you know, show uh, with uh, that was a play on the the movie. Um, you know, Fantastic Journey, 
that 12 episode thing I think with Jared Martin was in it. So there was a lot, uh, like, a, like a renewed interest. I mean, they're small potatoes, but still, science fiction was now appearing quasi regularly on on regular TV. I mean, like NBC and CBS, and of course, Battlestar Galactica, which was a disappointment in and of itself, but still. When Galactica came out, they were like saying, oh, this is like Star Wars for the small screen and what have you. So, to me, a lot of that has to, Space 99 has some credit for that. Because I remember that time, and you, you people who were growing up in the 70s, like if you're my age, you know, you're like maybe you're 10 or 11, back in 1975. You remember, if you lived in New York or Pennsylvania, Star Trek was on every day. Sometimes Saturdays, too. So that's six, you know, that's six days a week. <laughs> it was a lot, and, and like I said, I mean, every three months, you uh, and this continued for like twenty years. Channel Eleven was showing this, and that's great. You know what I mean? And when I, when Space Nine went off the air, and I took a break from science fiction for a while, Star Trek brought me back, and, and I can't say enough about that show. I love it, but still, uh, we needed something back then. Uh, if you were a science fiction fan, you remember back then because you could memorize. You knew what Mr. Spock was going to do next, and you knew what Captain Kirk was going to say next. You got to know these episodes like the back of your hand. Uh, so we needed something new, and that's why Space Nine, Nine, hey, look, those episodes are no way as good as Star Trek, but it was something new and something what we needed. So there were 24 episodes in the first season, and they were pretty good. The main, the main, the special effects were outstanding. The miniature special effects, they were beyond, uh, you know, well beyond, all equal to, in some respects, those of Star Trek, if not better. But, as we learn with Battlestar Galactica, special effects, <coughs> excuse me, in and of themselves, will not save a show if the characters are considered wooden and lifeless. And this was a major complaint about it, Space 1999. It's like, you know, you got Martin Landau, who's this great actor, flying around all over the place, and you got a bunch of these no-name people who are just, like, taking up space and, you know, saying one word, check, uh, check, come on, uh, yeah, this computer's not a crystal ball. <laughs> I mean, there was, they had this character, uh, David Cano, I think he's played by Clifton Jones. His, his one defining moment, I think somebody, this alien took over this guy, he was, he was monkeying around with the computer, and comes, hey, get away from there! And the guy picks him up, throws him across the command center or whatever, I'm like, wow, that's his big claim to fame, you know, throughout 24 episodes. Um, but, so that was the problem, so pretty much... Even the ensemble cast on Star Trek, you know, Sulu and, you know, Chekhov and Dahora, uh, you know, and Mr. Scott, of course, they still had, you know, substantially more minerals than say, you know, well, I mean, maybe with Ahura, maybe not, you know, Tailing Frequencies Open, but still, she got some good uh, scenes in, in in the later seasons. Um, but pretty much, like, everybody else is kind of like, you know, window dressing in that show. Um, and I think people agree with me, except Alan. Alan, the Nick Tay character, uh, was was played very well, and it had a media version. In fact, when the second season happened, and a lot of people from season one, you know, didn't transfer over to season two, um, you're kind of like, hey, what the hell went on? Alan made the cut, though. And rightfully so, uh, because he was great. I think they really would have not cried had he been not included in the second season. So, it, uh, in, in summation, try to watch this show. Just watch it for what it is. I think you'll find some of these episodes very atmospheric. There's some great background music when they've had it. The special effects are exemplary. And uh, it's just like a really, it's a good show. Not great. It's got its problems, but it's definitely worth watching. And I think you'll find it quite enjoyable. It's not this stupid, you know, Will Robinson robot, you know, Danger Will Robinson. Uh, maybe, if anything, the criticism is a little bit too serious. But uh, you'll 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 think it's very good. And just give it a try. And I think that you'll enjoy Next time we talk, we'll talk about Season 2, what happened, the aftermath of Season 1. And uh, we'll take it from there. Okay? Live long and prosper, you Trekkies. Don't be mad at me. Signing off.